the loss of family functioning as a result of divorce, daycare, dual careers, and the glorification of shacking up and unwed motherhood by choice. Wow. 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 I'm not even sure where to begin. Hey everybody, it's Benji Mark and I am back with another video. Today I'm actually going to be doing a book review. The book is called The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands. This is actually recommended reading by uh, the Darling Academy with Kate Elena. Elena Kate, sorry. I remember when she was recommending this book, she did say that it is, um, at the time of its publishing, it was, and I think still is, a controversial book. Um, that much is reflected in the Amazon reviews, some of which I'm actually going to read to you right now. One commenter, one commenter said, this author focuses on taking responsibility for your own side of your unhappy marriage, which is important. However, the remedies she proposes are outrageous. She demands every woman quits in any, any activity that gets in the way of your husband feeling satisfied, especially sexually in a marriage, including work. Too tired after a day of work to have sex? Have sex anyway. Then quit your job because it's less important than your husband's frequent release. Another reviewer said, I bought this book because it was highly recommended by a friend. It puts all the blame of marital problems on women and God forbid you work outside the home. Dr. Laura seems to believe that a woman's place is in the kitchen, serving her husband and not making her own needs or desires known. There were too many times that I felt so enraged with, with what she says that I threw the book. I only read the first two chapters because I was determined to get through it, but the book left such a nasty taste in my mouth, I couldn't finish it. Another says, I honestly didn't know this was anti-feminist propaganda. The contest, the contents is insulting to both men and women as it encourages the stereotype that men are basically dumb beings wanting nothing more from life than sandwiches and sex. If the men in your life are this way, you should probably consider moving. So with such scathing reviews, I clearly had to read the book. So I bought it. And what I plan on doing is doing kind of a, a mini series of the book, reading it in small chunks, uh, highlighting, reading some excerpts that I thought were uh, very uh, important and things that I just made an impression on me and kind of giving my take on them. I would very much so like this to be an interactive type uh, process. So if you guys want to buy the book and read it alongside me as I am making my way through it, feel free to do so. Um, just a couple of disclaimers. So as I said in my first video about being a housewife and what that's like for me, I am a Christian and so the Bible is rule of law for me. And so that's going to create kind of a context for why I think about things the way that I do. The other one, the other disclaimer, disclaimer is actually included by the author herself and I wanted to include it. She says, where the behavior of one or both of the spouses is blatantly destructive, dangerous, or evil, this book does not apply. And so I think that that's definitely something important to take in mind as we are navigating through this book. But shall we begin? This overview will be covering just the introduction and chapter one, which is titled The Improper Care and Feeding of Husbands. Uh, Dr. Laura actually started this chapter with an excerpt, uh, not an excerpt, but a quote from a man, and I thought it was interesting and I wanted to read it. I'm a 37-year-old man who has seen quite a, bit of, quite a bit in life, and I can offer this to your search for how to treat a man. We are men, not dum-dums, psychics, or one bit unromantic. We need only clear communication, appreciation, honest love, and respect. This will be repaid by laying the moon and stars at your feet for your pleasure. There is no need to work a man to get what you want. We live to take care of a wife, family, and home. Just remember that we are men and know that our needs are simple but not to be ignored. A good man is hard to find but not hard to keep. I thought that that was a really interesting um, addition from a man. I think that sometimes we as women can talk about about men and around men but never include men in the discussion and so i think that it's interesting to listen to men talk about how they view and perceive themselves and uh perhaps men actually are as simple as they they claim they are but let's keep reading later on she uh the the author writes i've got to tell you how remarkably true and sad it is that so many women struggle to hold on to some jerk keep giving an abusive or philandering man yet another chance, 
have unprotected sex with some guy while barely knowing his last name, agree to shack up and risk making babies with some opportunist or loser, all in a pathetic version of a pursuit for love, but will resent the heck out of will resent the heck out of treating a decent, hardworking, caring husband with the thoughtfulness, attention, respect, and affection he needs to be content. It boggles my mind. I thought that this was a really interesting um, piece to include in her work. Um, I definitely feel as though Maya, so I realized as I was reading this book that much of the assumptions that I hold about men at large, not necessarily individual men that I know, but men at large, many of my assumptions are negative. And I realized as I was reading this, this really is not a fair thing to, to kind of generalize and spread across the board to men everywhere at all times in every situation. It's really not fair because it isn't true of every single man. And actually, as I've gotten older and my social circles have changed, most of my friends are married couples and they are in healthy marriages with healthy families intact with children and all of these things. And I've actually had an opportunity to see really upstanding men of character and dignity who deserve honor and respect. And so I actually, I kind of felt convicted while reading this because this really is true. I think that women will sometimes, we, and, I'll, and I won't make it a judgment on those women, we uh, women can sometimes uh, pick men poorly. And then because we have picked a man poorly, um, not really know how to interact with and deal with a man who is actually of a much higher caliber and make the good man pay for the sins of the the bad man that was there before him and, and that's really a mistake that we that we can make as women and i hate to see it. another thing that she wrote in here she says men are born of women and spend the rest of their lives yearning for a woman's acceptance and approval give him direct communication respect appreciation food and good loving and he'll do just about anything you wish foolish or not this was also a kind of refreshing take on things because I think at least the narrative that I have kind of been raised in and bathed in and grew up in is that men hold the power and that they wield that power in a tyrannical way. But um, this author is proposing that in actuality, it is a woman that has the influence. She may not necessarily have the direct power but she has influence over the one with the power and her influence is actually quite extensive so much so that really at least this author believes that men have an emotional vulnerability and dependence on the woman that they've chosen constantly seeking for her approval and admiration and respect that that is something that i hadn't considered but when i think about it in terms of the bible where the bible charges women to respect their husbands it could be that god is trying to give us kind of a leg up in helping us to have influence and be able to really partner with our husbands in the way that he designed it not through domineering and not through dominating them but instead through respectful influence if that makes sense that really does tie into what i to me it ties into what i think the bible teaches in instructing women to be respectful because in actually being respectful and submissive you actually win influence with your husband you don't lose it another thing that stood out to me is uh and i'm just taking little bits and pieces i explained to her that personal change was difficult griping about somebody else was easy when you are constantly trying to change him or demand more or different, he reads that as though you don't approve or appreciate what he is offering and who he is. Remember, this is the man you picked. I think that that's also a really good point. Um, I never considered that. I thought that by suggesting improvements that I was actually helping him, but based on what this author is saying, when we as women ultimately criticize our husbands. It sends a message to them that they're actually not up to snuff, they're not good enough, and that leads to them feeling disrespected by us. Here the author is actually quoting another woman who I assume identifies as a feminist, and she says, Gloria Steinem wrote that women need men like fish need bicycles. More than a generation of women have foolishly bought that destructive nonsense and have denigrated men, marriage, familial obligation, and motherhood all to their own detriment. 
Normal, healthy women yearn to be in love, married, and raising children with the man of their dreams. However, when their own mothers, much less society, tell them that they don't need men to be happy or to raise children and that their own children don't even need a mother raising them because daycare will do, it caused many women to lose the incentive and the ability to treat their personal lives with the love, dedication, sacrifice, and compassion and loyalty that will ultimately bring them happiness and a sense of purpose. I highlighted this portion of the book because it felt like she was reading me for filth. Um, it almost felt like she knew my family um, because I very much so was ra raised with the attitude that I don't need a man, don't depend on a man, totally okay. Um, to turn your children over to daycare. And ultimately, I think that there are some circumstances in life, especially when we're talking about single parenthood, unexpected things that come up in life, but holding all extremes equal, I really was raised to believe that like, it's okay to sacrifice much in the name of work, including husbands, including children. Husband, he's an adult, he can fend for himself. Children, you can always take them to daycare. I was raised with that. So when I started getting closer to marriage and felt my values shifting where I was like, no, I actually want to be able to serve my husband. I actually want to be present to nurture and raise my, my children. I got a lot of backlash from my family, a lot of backlash. It says, however, when their own mothers tell them that they don't need men to be happy or to raise children and that their own children don't even need a mother, because daycare will do. It caused many women to lose their incentive and ability to treat their personal lives with sacrifice, compassion, loyalty, and all of the things. Man, that was me. And I also am beginning to understand why to some people this book is very offensive. Um, interestingly, I don't know what it says about me, but I don't find anything, at least so far, I don't find anything offensive about this book. This is so far, I am in alignment with this with this author. This is not enraging to me. This is incredibly validating because I'm like, oh, I'm not crazy for wanting, for having these desires. I'm moving on to chapter one, starting with another excerpt. Women need to understand how frustrating it is dealing with a double standard that only takes into account the woman's immediate needs or desires. It was his perception that everything the woman feels or needs is legitimate and very important, while anything related to the man is unimportant and selfish. A little, on, a little further down the page, what causes this double standard mentality? In one big hyphenated word, self-centeredness. And what is the source of this self-centeredness? I believe it's a result of the women's movement with its condemnation of just about everything male as evil, stupid, and oppressive, and the denigration of the female and male roles in family, as well as the loss of family functioning as a result of divorce, daycare, dual careers, and the glorification of shacking up and unwed motherhood by choice. There, these are the core destructive influence that result in women not appreciating that they are perfected as are men when they are bonded in wedlock and have obligations to family. Wow, okay, so I think I'm getting into why this offended so many people. And yet again, I'm not offended. I am with her 100% on this. Um, wow, how many of us have been programmed to look at men and things pertaining to maleness as evil, stupid, and oppressive and encourage to degrade men. Like, I can't be the only one. I know I'm not the only one, but I definitely, I definitely feel like that's, that was unfortunately part of my thought process prior to really taking a deep dive in this. It says, uh, the denigration the loss of family functioning as a result of divorce, daycare, dual careers, and the glorification of shacking up and unwed motherhood by choice. Wow. 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 I'm not even sure where to begin. Somebody gonna get mad. <laughs> if I say anything, someone's gonna get mad. Man. Hmm. Actually, I'm just leave that one alone. Moving on, when marriages are distressed, the children are hurt and limited in their ability and hope to achieve happiness. This is the point I bring to the attention of many women callers who with unrealistic demands and outcome and outrageously negative behaviors determine that the solution to their problems in their home is divorce. 
There are two issues that I force them to look at. The first is that children of divorce will suffer both in the present and in the future. The second is that they are wrong if they think a new pair of pants will change their lives because the same skirt will be in the room. I challenge them to do what they complain their spouses won't or can't do, change. I remind them that their current feelings do not need to change before they can change their behaviors. There is so much in this. Um, unfortunately, when I consider like, not so much my immediate circle now, but previously, whenever I would make the mistake of discussing marital hardship with the incorrect audience, divorce was readily suggested to me. And I realize how, yeah, that plays into just an undermining and really a devaluation of the sanctity of marriage and how it really is a lifetime vow. I understand that even, the, and let me be clear, like there are some things that can break a vow. Even biblically speaking, the Lord creates um, areas where a marriage vow can be dissolved because of just behavior of one or both partners. But outside of those extremes, divorce really can't be the solution to just I'm unhappy or I this is not what I bargained for. And again, I feel quite convicted in listening to this lady speak quite directly about how sometimes when women find themselves unhappy in a marriage, they are too quick to consider divorce. Well, on the last page of chapter one, she says, I spend hours of my radio program trying to help folks get past the frighteningly pervasive diabolical message that married women at home with the children somehow aren't total women maximizing their potential and that men are idiotic, self-centered sex fiends incapable of contributing anything of value to women or children. I actually, when I finished reading the first two sections of the book, the introduction and chapter one, I actually felt really compelled to start praying for our, our culture and our nation because it wasn't until this lady started putting it in plain terms in black and white on printed paper that I understood how broken, upside down, in need of repair, and change are the attitudes and perceptions that we have of men and women in general, but then also how we view men and women within marriage. Now, again, as a Christian, I have no qualms with this author essentially charging and calling women to regard their husbands with the utmost respect. And I'm about to say something that is going to be offensive to some of you. I don't, she did not say this, but I don't see anything wrong with the biblical mandate to respect, submit to, and even obey your husband. Um, obviously not to the point of sin, right? But holding the extremes out of the equation, I don't see anything wrong with the notion of respecting, submitting, and obeying your husband. These are these are clear commands in the Bible. So because I'm already good on the biblical mandates, nothing in this book is like throwing me for a doozy in the way that I think it was throwing some of the um, com the reviewers on, on the Amazon page, like many women thought that this book was completely offensive, but I, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't keep reading this. But anyway, I'm, I'm at the end of chapter one. Um, the book, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to finish reading this quickly because it is actually a really good read. If this is something that you're interested in following along with me, um, to do i recommend that you go on amazon purchase it you can buy used copies for as cheap as like one or two dollars it's not very expensive at all get the book um i plan on doing kind of like mini uh reviews probably two chapters at a time every week until we get to the end of the book i would love for this to be kind of an engaging discussion and dialogue about the contents of the book what you agree with disagree with and let me know based on the high level review that i did of just the introduction in the first chapter what are some things that you are like i am 100 percent in align with that or you are 100 percent staunchly opposed to and why i would want i would really like to understand kind of 
what shapes the mind and the reactions of the people because it feels like this book is very polarizing no one's in the middle you're either all for it or you're against it whichever side of the fence you land on i would love to know your feedback and why you feel the way you feel but as always thank you for tuning in and i will see you next time Thank you.